Masanaga Optical was started in 1905 by Mr. Masanaga, who was actually working as a, a politician, and he was on the board in uh, the city of Fukui, Japan. And during uh, the early 1900s, there was it's a farming community. And what happened was there was no work to be had in the wintertime when it was really cold. So the farmers didn't really have any way to make an income. So what happened was he wound up hiring all these engineers from all over Japan and he told them to come to Fukui to pitch him on what industries they can start to develop so they can you know, pretty much create an income for their community. So what happened was after meeting with several different engineers from different fields, he felt like eyewear was the best industry to get into. So he started the first eyewear factory in Fukui, Japan, uh, in um, the whole country of Japan. What happened was he told all of his employees if they did the best work with handmade acetate, if they made hinges that were the best quality in the world, then they could leave the factory and start another factory nearby which no other company would ever do that because they wanted the best employees to stay there. But he really wanted to promote eyewear for the community and build an industry. And he knew that if he had multiple factories in that community, it would make the community better overall. So every single factory that is in Fukui, Japan, is a direct descendant from Masanaga, which is pretty cool. And there's a lot of high-end factories there, but they all have roots from Masanaga. And what they're doing is, they're not, they don't care about profit, it's all about quality. And they figure, you know, profit will come if the quality is the best. Country in the early 1900s and in the, in the 30s and 40s, and they used to custom make handmade frames for the emperor in solid gold, like I was showing you earlier. And uh, in 1970, they had the, the World's Fair in Fukui, Japan. And what happened was, they had a frame that was so popular at the time, it was iconic, they, they put it in a time capsule. And it's the only eyewear brand that was able to be put in the time capsule because they wanted something that spoke the time period and they also wanted something that was classic, iconic to, uh, to represent the eyewear. So with this handmade acetate, it's a seven barrel hinge and it's, it's pretty much built like a tank. They're polished two to three times longer than most high-end brands. They're hand polished and also polished with clay which gets out all the fine lines and little scratches and impurities, so it gives it that really rich luster. I don't know if you can tell from the camera, but it's a really deep, deep navy. It just looks really rich. And uh, underneath the plastic on the, on the acetate is a core of titanium. Now, we talk about the attention and detail with the end pieces, and uh, the titanium typically is used underneath the acetate is like a, a monel or a nickel. So it's a softer metal, and it's cheap and inexpensive to use. But what happens is when you have a heavy frame and you use Monella nickel, it makes the frame that much heavier. When you use titanium, it makes the frame lighter, but it also holds the adjustment a little bit longer. And it keeps a, a tight fit so that that state doesn't go back to its original form, which is flat. And then what we try to do is we're trying to brand Masanaga since 1905. So we etch it out, we do the old school printing where it's like an inlay, and we're trying to show the history of the brand because it's truly one of the richest. are coming up with black and tortoise and it's nice and everyone wants black and tortoise but we wanted to create something like a little richer something that's like luster something that gives a little personality and something unique and we're doing a lot of laminates and gradients that kind of just make things pop and we made this flesh tone so it almost looks like on the skin like it's semi rimless so it fades in so it's a nice contrast between the red the, the, I would call that like a candy apple red and the flesh tone of the underwire uh, this one is a beautiful, beautiful, like a blue tort, nice laminate, and it's actually laminated together to give it that depth and a little rich texture. And uh, this piece here is one of the first combinations of like a P3 shape, and it's made with the old school way they put rivets. A lot of the companies these days to cut corners, which Masanaga never does, uh, they're actually using the true rivets, so it holds it together better. And all the, the acetate is, is a combination of the titanium. And the titanium is a really hard material and it's really hard to etch. Most companies use it on Monella or Nickel. And this is like the first, the one of a kind, the original. And now all the companies are taking inspiration from this over the years. And everyone thinks, oh, well, it's a copy of this, a copy of that. Well, this is the original right here. He, uh, it's going to be featured at Tiny Torch Optical on 3rd Street in Los Angeles. And hopefully you can uh, go by and check out the full collection. I don't look good in rounds, but I'll use you just, just to show you. 
It's a really clean fit. The frames that are this thin feel flimsy. Since it's a beta titanium, it has a nice flex to it, but also titanium is hypoallergenic, it's anti-corrosive. Uh, the advantage also is that it's the lightest, strongest material in the world. There's not many companies that can make solid gold frames. These frames are solid gold. These are going to retail for $3,500.